In every video game series, there always seems to be an odd game out, whether it be Zelda, Pokemon, or Sonic. There's always that one game that sticks out like a sore thumb. Now you may be thinking, what Mario Kart game is the odd one out? To me, it is definitely Mario Kart 7. But why is that? That's what we're talking about today. Also quickly before we get started, I just wanted to say if you're now around here, consider subscribing. I never say this, but with the channel doing very well recently with lots of new viewers, I thought, why not? Alright, with all of that being said, let's talk about Mario Kart 7. Mario Kart 7 is the fourth best selling game in the series, but despite selling really well, you can't help but notice that it just feels a bit off. Don't get me wrong, I love Mario Kart 7 and I've played it for over 150 hours, but it does have its flaws. What flaws does it have? Let's start out with the obvious. Versus Race One of the most important features in any Mario Kart game is just not present here, so if you want to play Woohoo Mountain Loop or Rainbow Road, you're going to have to play through the whole cup before even getting to them. A lack of versus race makes tons of tracks less accessible, which may have turned people off from the game as they'd have to wait to play some of their favourite tracks. Now the battle mode in Mario Kart 7 isn't really bad, but it's also not that good. Do you think after the success of Mario Kart Wii, Nintendo would just go all out for the next game with a heavily improved battle mode, new modes, and a good amount of stages? What does Mario Kart 7 have? The exact same battle modes, Golden Battle and Coin Runners, with less stages that are very average. Honeybee Hive and Sherbet Rink were cool concepts, but they're just not very fun. The three retro stages are all just kinda mid-tier, they're not bad, but they're not great. And then Woohoo Town absolutely carries them all. Easily the best battle stage in Mario Kart 7. Now Mario Kart 7 was never really known for having a crazy roster. When you look at it, it's actually pretty boring. You've got all the familiar faces, but then you've got characters like Honey Queen, Metal Mario, and Lakitu. Yeah, he's the guy who picks you up from falling, but does he really need to be a character? Then there's the obvious character missing that literally everyone has complained about not being in the game. Waluigi. I've never really been too fond of Waluigi, but it is a shame that he's not in the game, as he is such an iconic Mario character. Mario Kart 7's Nitro Tracks now this is a part of the game that's not really bad, it's just like the whole of Mario Kart 7. Forgettable. You've got some great tracks like Woohoo Island and Mountain Loop, Koopa City and Rainbow Road. Then the tracks that are so forgettable to the average Mario Kart fan, like Wario's Galleon and Rosalina's Ice World. Both decent tracks, but unfortunately they have just been forgotten. Most of Mario Kart 7's retro tracks are nothing special, just your average tracks from previous games, but I guess you could say that for a lot of retro tracks. But there are some great ones, such as Wii Mushroom Gorge, DS Waluigi Pinball, DS DK Pass, and Wii Maple Treeway. Some great retro tracks that make the game more fun to play. And that's all I have to say about Mario Kart 7. Sorry if this seemed rather short, I just ran out of Mario Kart 7 related things to talk about, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless. Once again, I don't dislike Mario Kart 7, I enjoy it a lot, and I really hope more people give it a try in the future, it's definitely worth it. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you all soon.